The past, the present, the future. This is Friday Night Fright. What the planet is listening to. Hello, it's Ian Austin, your party host of Friday Night Fright, back with another special bonus episode. This one is a dip into our repertoire of It's Not So Bad movies, and much like Suicide Squad, this one all steers with a comic book movie, Batman vs Superman. Oh, this one might be a bit more difficult than I anticipated, but I think I can make a good case for it being not quite as bad as you imagine. I don't know if I'd go so far as say it's good, but it's not that bad and by that bad I mean the result it got rotten tomatoes and all of that I certainly even have to be defending this as a piece of art but hopefully during this little round ramble preamble whatever you want to call it I'll be able to portray a few arguments for it being maybe reconsidered in a slight sense because let's face it it could have been worse I know that sounds ridiculous but that's true I'll be back after a brief word my sponsor And we're back. So first thing to say when reviewing Batman vs Superman, or discussing indeed Batman vs Superman, is you have to wear up on it being what it is, namely a sequel to Man of Steel and a prequel Just League. So in that regard, we, okay, we can disregard Just League because that came out afterwards, that's reaction to this movie, but we can't disregard Man of Steel. And the important thing to realise is that this is a sequel for all intents and purposes to Man of Steel. It wasn't a reboot, they didn't read to anything. They might have said they were going to, but that's lip service. This is a direct sequel to Man of Steel, by which it's a sequel to a movie where Superman and Zod destroyed most Metropolis, and Superman didn't do a particularly good job past the few moments of saving anyone. So you have to take that into account. So, and so much you can change with that. Change too much, it's not a sequel. It goes against director's vision, all that crap. And I know what you're going to say. Maybe you should have gone against director's vision because Zack Snyder is not a particularly good director. And I would not argue with you about that point because I don't think he's a particularly good director. But you have to look at facts. And facts are this was a movie made after Man Steel and taking Man Steel into account. So they wrote themselves into a corner with their version of Superman, version of Zog, their version of Lurse Lane, Perry White and all of that. So it was a case of how can we get out of right that corner that we've written ourselves into while keeping somewhat consistency. And the result is Batman vs Superman, a movie which tries, I guess you could say, it wants so it wants to achieve the gravitas of source material, which in this place is The Dark Knight Returns, the seminal Frank Miller comic book from nineteen eighties, which popularised Batman way maybe never been popularised before in terms of audience reception and viewing him as a serious cat rather than as the broader Adam West version which again I'm not making fun of Adam West at all in the quite great version of the character doing an amazing job but people want it they need it serious Batman and combination with the Dark Knight Returns and first Tim Burton Batman evidently shot Batman up to being taken more seriously as a possibly literary character someone of substance and indeed that's why so many people today maintain the Batman have all complex characters is possibly best because he can write that line like a Sherlock Holmes or a Doctor Who for example where he can be a variety of different things and without conforming certain stereotypes as long as you keep certain parts of Batman in place you can do almost anything for character I think that comic book obviously had a big role in that because it's a bridge between the sort of goofy broad Batman, the slightly more gothic Neil Adams Batman and the Batman we see today. So if you take that into account, source material is dark and all of that, you can understand why this movie was also dark. The fundamental flaw of the movie however is the fact that it's dark but it's not really saying anything that really needs to be said. The comic book was a size of Sorry, a psychological profile in a lot of ways, exploring psyches of Batman, Commissioner Gordon, the new Robin, and of course the Joker, and doing a good job of parlaying that, as we're shown that Gotham is a town or city or whatever Gotham City is, obviously, city, and it reacts to Batman. So, Batman being gone, the city would react to that and Joker and all of that, but it did a really good job. Now, here's the kicker. It didn't, it never did a particularly good job with Superman because here's the problem, Frank Miller doesn't really understand Superman, that's fine. 
You can be one of the better comic book writers. It doesn't mean you're always going to have perfect understanding of every character. No, Darkly Frank Miller didn't. And here's the other problem. Frank Miller's Dark Knight and Year One are still esteemed comic books, but they have aged quite a bit over the last few decades. So making source material from them, you have to be very careful not to take them too literally. And this movie took the surface themes and indeed subtextual themes of Frank Miller's comic books and it removed the subtext from them and just pad its text. What I will say about Zack Snyder is there's certain moments in the movie where he captures some of the feel of The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller, particularly seeing where Superman flies doomsday into space and the nuclear bomb goes off and it hits them and you see a weathered Superman, which is quite a realistic interpretation. I hate using the word realistic for Zack Snyder, but it's a good interpretation for the moment from the comic book where Superman's likewise and then the Earth revitalizing him and all that. The only problem is that Snyder doesn't really understand context. There's a reason for it happening in the book. There's a reason for happening in terms of plot. There's a reason for happening in terms of character. And there's reasons for happening in terms of theme. So that Snyder doesn't understand that. And that's why I think the fundamental problem a lot of people have with Batman vs Superman is it's not intrinsically no, it's bad. It's not good, but it's not because intrinsically it's bad. The problem is that Snyder throws these images at you. No, it could be good but you have no context for. For example, Rushing Doomsday. The reason Doomsday works in comic book is because you've had Superman as this nigh-immortal, invulnerable man who can solve any situation for a mix of intelligence, and if not intelligence, using his fists. You know? And here's the problem they create with Batman vs Superman. Because it comes off Man of Steel. Man of Steel, Superman obviously murders Zod and it's a really terrible moment of that but what you really needed for something like Batman vs Superman and Park Doomsday to work was a Superman who spent the last 10 years refusing to sink so low again and find another way all of that you know because Superman is after all Boy Scout and Boy Scouts are many learned individuals and also tried to be skilled in as many things as possible you know and with this movie it kind of falls apart a bit because with Doomsday it's too early in timeline. We haven't got no Superman yet. You throw a doomsday at us? Like, especially after last movie where Metropolis got trashed. I'm seeing why a lot of people had a lot of issues with a nameless part of Gotham being trashed in a fight. Although we maintain that the image of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman team up to fight is actually really, really cool. The shot from them in profile. But that's one of the other things that Zack Snyder falls down on. He puts things in movie because they're cool. But you can't just have cool things. It is my fundamental problem with Suck Punch. Suck Punch is on process. Or on surface. A quotation marks. Cool movie. And it's cool movie because it looks like a video game. And visually stunning and all that. But it doesn't really mean anything. Because Zack Snyder doesn't have the storytelling instincts. To take what should be an effective plot or an effective multi-layer complex plot and really push it to the absolute level. If you look at something like Inception, Chris Nolan has rules for how things work. That's no, it doesn't. It's just, this is cool. This is a dream. You know, that's it. You know, there's layers of dreams. We're not going to explain how any of them work. And sometimes you don't have to explain how things work, but other times you do, and with that's nine movies, you really do. But I will maintain there's parts of Batman for Superman, parts of Batman for Superman which hold up quite nicely. And the first one I will say, and I'll maintain this, is Wonder Woman. Despite the fact that she at times seems to exist in a different time zones of people, namely by virtue of she's waiting in the airport, she sees fight on TV. Next time see her, she's in the plane, she hears about the fight on TV, and then she leaves the plane and then gets to the fighting time. But that doesn't work because you just have to wait yeah, put get on plane. You have to wait in the departure lounge to get on plane again. Two separate bits away. And then you have to wait for plane to take off. The fight will be over by the time she got back there. I also like the idea that they're trying... Zack so Snow just trying to take elements of the Excalibur movie from 1981 by John Borman. 
with regards to the sept and things like that. He's trying to take elements of that movie and implant them, and that's fine. You can take parts of movies you like and try and implant them in movies, but the problem is that Snyder is just ripping them wholesale. He's not recontextualizing them for the mythology he's trying to create. And there's also little bits that uh, you get a bit with the water at the end, which is perfect moment for Aquaman to have his cameo, but he does have his cameo. You know, he has cameo and completely unrelated part of wrong. But at the same time, like I said, I'll find some parts of the movie I like. And one part of the movie I do particularly like is shock horror Ben Affleck's version of Batman, which we do not see in Justice League because they change so much up just the that they remove one few good parts of Batman vs Superman. Ben Affleck's Batman personally portrays a version of Batman which to be honest in my personal interpretation is the same version of Batman that existed in 1989. I think if you may throw a line between Keaton's Batman to Affleck's Batman include all your Batman's canon except for Christian Bale obviously but if you have through line from 1989 to the present day that version just about works for Ben Affleck's Batman indeed it adds a lot of recontextualization now granted you have to make a lot of assumptions and you have to change a lot of stuff up with casting Joker and whatnot for the purposes of Suicide Squad but at the same time I think if you had that story like that for Batman you can actually see movie works a lot better I mean after all he talks about exploding penguins in Just League and in 1992, Batman Returns Exploding Penguins. We get the musical homage to the Danny Elfman Batman scene score, or rather, in Just League as well. And granted, those aren't tropes relevant to Batman vs Superman, but I do like the idea that he has this great history. And it's nice to see a Batman that's fully formed on screen rather than have his origin story again. I can understand why people are a bit miffed, but because they think that Batman needs more setting up, his own solo movie gets this point. But I'd argue he doesn't actually need one, and indeed it would harm the material if he had one. A fundamental flaw of this movie for a lot of people, the real flaw is there's no reason Batman and Superman fight. And that's true. But if you had a movie where Batman was investigating Superman, Batman would realise Superman's okay. Like, if he spent a year investigating Superman, within the day of meeting Superman, they'd be like, yeah, we're okay. Which is the case in this movie. They know each other for a day, and then they get over it. They realise that the other one's okay. The movie falls apart more, you think about it, in regards to their relationship, but we fall apart even more with that movie in between. And also the fact that Batman vengeful Batman for a movie trying to hunt Superman but dealing with a villain of his own I, I, I don't see how that works now granted Superman's a different question because Superman in this movie is in the second part of his own trilogy in theory although in actuality they're still not where they should have been with regards to Superman Superman should have been open, overcompensating in this movie, last movie. He should have been, in my opinion, putting on that, very jovial, very happy, as if he's trying to be a brighter individual for humanity. He's got his doubts, he's got his frustrations, but he wants to set a better example because he knows they're scared of him. They don't do that. They go down the fear, Superman is feared route, which I think it's something that Snow took from Watchmen because and again, it's another one for the flaws inherent with Batman vs Superman is fact that it's that Snyder sees Batman Superman as Night Owl and Doctor Manhattan respectfully. He doesn't understand that those versions in Watchmen were extreme archetypes for the characters. Whereas in actuality, Superman is meant to be a good guy and Batman's meant to be a good guy who's slightly darker. That's what they're meant to be. You can have characterization, you can have complex characterization for both, but at their fundamental root, they are these characters. Superman is the nicest person you ever meet, and Batman's a guy who never thinks what he's doing is enough and keeps fighting even when he knows he's beat. You know? Batman's a, essentially the flip side of Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor wants the powers of a god, you know? That's what Lex Luthor creates power for power's sake. Whereas Batman creates power to improve society and make sure no one goes through what he went through, which is the reason why he adopts so many Robins in comic books. And this movie, I, I, I think the idea of a torture Batman is a good thing. I just feel like I can understand in part people's frustrations with not knowing who Batman was before this point. 
and I agree with that. I think bigger problem Superman. Because as you've seen Wonder Woman in subsequent Wonder Woman at Manchester and movies, if you hire the right people, you can make a bright and breezy superhero movie with darker themes. I mean, Shazam in particular is exactly the tone of Superman movie should be. Some real horrifying elements, but fundamental core of the movie is a good, good person who's fundamentally good, who might do things which are slightly questionable at times, but at the same time, they're fun, you know? And also Mark Strong was a better that solution than Jesse Eisberg, although I enjoy Jesse Eisenberg's interpretation of the character, and I think a lot of criticism for that is rooting the idea that comic book characters can be only one thing. Obviously, I just said Superman Batman should be brought down to specific characteristics, but they can change up from within that. In some like Let Sufa, I don't feel you have to say it's only one thing, because he's been so many things over the years in combos. He's been a mad scientist, he's been a billionaire inventor, he's been a member of Just League, which was an interesting storyline, although a bit of a rip-off of the Marvel ones with... Um, Marvel 1, sorry, with Dr. Octopus. Although, you know, nice contrast because let's even Dr. Octopus are obviously fundamentally different characters. And I think the idea of Let's Luthor is this sort of weird, kooky business guy. I can buy that, you know, because it's a front. That whole aspect of his character is a front from the hor horrible, rotten person he is underneath. His movie essentially is that Snyder trying to form the contrast between the three of them. We'd see Superman's a saviour, but he doesn't see him safe that way. We'd see Batman's a menace, but he doesn't see him safe that way. And we'd see Lex Luthor as this goofy man because he wants to see, have them see him that way so he can manipulate from shadows. So it's actually quite a cool thing. Although, in saying that, I do think the idea they have casting someone like Denzel Washington as Lex Luthor, they should, I wish they'd gone with that. Or even something like Kurt Russell, because I always got the idea Lex Luthor was meant to be older than Superman, even Smallville, with their Lex, who was closer to Clark's age, was always portrayed as being an adult, compared to young adults on the show. Indeed, I think another reason, one of the reasons why people didn't necessarily take Batman for Superman is the simple fact that we've had a lot of Superman content over the years, some good, some bad, and with the rise of CW TV shows, I think people feel that they're serviced in regards to the DC Universe, and rightly so said, why can't these characters be on screen? And on big screen. And why we say is, I don't disagree with them. This movie with The Flash, Cameo for example, and Just League, and I'm sure we'll talk about Just League at some point, you know. But, I do agree with those concepts. I do agree that this movie, if DC won itself a, the big multi-screen universe, they had an easy out, easy in. They had a Flash on TV, played by a very good actor, who, shock horror, spoilers, Flash TV series if you haven't seen it, can run between dimensions, and you're telling me you couldn't have figured out a way to have him in this movie, and have a cat set up with multiple seasons of TV, who knows his character inside and out. That's one of the things I find annoying about Hollywood sometimes, and I feel, especially with someone like Zack Snyder, who sees himself as, sees himself as an auteur, but you get his version of a superhero movie contrasting with someone like Russo Brothers, who know how to make movies as collaborative mediums. Someone like Zack Snyder wants to make Zack Snyder movie, whereas guys like Russo Brothers and James Gunn, they want to make their movies, but they can work within a bigger universe to encapsulate what they like and encapsulate what studios want at the same time. And that's one of the reasons, another reason why Batman vs Superman struggles, because this is mostly a Zack Snyder movie, but there's lots here he was told to include. And also at the same time, look, I'm not defending parts of the movie, like Jimmy Olsen. I won't defend that because I think if you don't understand Jimmy Olsen as a character, then you don't fucking understand Superman on a fundamental level. And if you don't understand Superman on a fundamental level, you shouldn't be making a fucking Superman movie. But he did make Superman movie and this was the result. I also thought the fight between Batman vs Superman, while being over the top and ridiculous and jarring horribly for the tone they wanted, was the most entertaining part of the movie. Because here's the twist, guys. If you're going to make a movie where superheroes fight, you need to make that scene 
you, in fact, you need to shape the movie differently. They should have looked to the same style that Chris Nolan looked for when he made The Dark Knight Rises, which was he used the structure of two properties. He used structure of A Tale of Two Cities, and he used structure of a Rocky movie, which you can see in scenes of Alfred Turn, Turn Batman, Bruce Wayne slash Batman. You can't beat Bane. Look at his speed, his ferocity, that skill, that training. Chris Nolan essentially combined the Tale of Two Cities and the plot from Rocky IV. And it's a brilliant idea, and it really works, because he beats up that fight between Bane and Batman, and it's an amazingly brutal experience where you're watching one of your heroes get destroyed on screen, and no amount of slow motion gifs or bang boys rambling about the scene where John Blake and Batman and Bruce Wayne talk about being orphans and how John Blake knows Bruce Wayne's Batman. No amount of that rubbish We change the fact that Chris Nolan did the best setup of any fight in any superhero movie and has been done to date and probably will ever be done. Because by the time you get to that second rematch, you're bursting for Bruce Wayne slash Batman and Kit Bane's ass, and it's just the ultimate free rest. It's just such a such a brilliant idea. And I think that's one of the other problems, or main problem, Batman for Superman. I enjoy five ways. It's nonsense. It's ludicrous. And there's scenes where there's a part where Batman swings Superman round with a chain and then smashes his head to bits with a kitchen sink. And that's brilliant. You know, I like that. I just wish the whole movie is like that, to be honest. If they've made a two-hour condensed for the action movie, kind of a bunch of fights between Batman vs Superman, I would prefer to watch that movie. But they didn't make that movie. Almost like you got Batman fighting Superman a couple of times, wants to find out what Superman's capable of, wants to move, move in, and they team up at the end, I guess. Because if they have to team up, that's fine. But you know, you need to earn that shit. And there's fundamentally flaw. Um, I don't think the script is the problem of this movie. I don't think you could write a script for Zack Snyder and that he wouldn't make some sort of a, a meal of in some guard because I don't think he's a writer by proxy. Definitely doesn't have a Steven Spielberg aptitude to it. And I know what people are going to say, but he took the script for Dawn of the Dead written by James Gunn and Scott Frank, the remake, Dawn of the Dead remake, and did a really good job with it. And I see he did a good job because he kept out of the way of the story. I believe that he had little do of it. He might have had some suggestions, but it's his first big movie, so he wasn't trying to rock the boat. Indeed, that's not not rocking the boat, it's fine. But so many of these Batman vs Superman ideas were clearly his ideas, like Nightmare Sequence, Barry Allen run back through time and all that shit, which don't even now don't make any sense. You can preface, preface it with I was trying to make the trilogy all he wants, but you've still got to make compare movies that work on their own. And while you can make case that something like Civil War doesn't necessarily work completely on its own, it still has a start, middle and end. This movie has a start, a middle and an end question mark, but it's blatant set up for another movie more than anything else. Like those things with Just League inserts, that was amateurish. And indeed, I feel like fun, the biggest issue with these movies, these DC comic book ones by Zack Snyder, is the Zack Snyder influence. I think if you had a director who took those scripts and added a sense of warmth to it, I think they could work. Indeed, parts of the movie with Jeremy Irons, I mean, some of his choices are on tap. Like, Jeremy Irons' Alfred is a really good choice. Ben Affleck's Batman is a really good choice. Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman's an exceptionally good choice. And there's a few parts which work well, but fundamentally it falls down a bit because that Snyder doesn't get Superman. He understands Batman to an extent, although he tries to make him more Rorschach than anything. And therein lies the fundamental crunch of this movie. This is Zack Snyder taking everything he learned on Watchmen and making a DC Combats movie with those with the DC Combats XPs of Watchmen and it doesn't work because those characters don't work in that environment. Zack Snyder did a really good job Watchmen on the surface. He didn't do such a good job with context, although he managed to make that movie, so that's an accomplishment. But at the end of the day, I still 
maintain at worst Batman vs Superman is an is an diverting misfire. It misses a lot more than it aims to hit. It doesn't really hit anything it aims to hit particularly successfully. And by statues of blockbusters it's not on the high end. But I don't think I'll hear a movie where Batman swings Superman around on chains, smashes him in the head of the kitchen sink. Plus, that just the team up at the end was undeniably exciting. So, no, no, I, I think I would say it's that bad, actually. Think of it, my defences of the movie are a very small part of the movie, and fundamentally it falls down so many levels. But, and here's the but, I think if you have a love for DC comic books like a real love not a superficial one and you liked the Green Lantern movie and you feel like you got something enjoyment I've seen the Trinity Wonder Woman Superman Batman team up on screen there's just nothing movie to justify you watching the YouTube highlights just go find the 4KD version on YouTube and just watch the action sequences on that but anyway my name's Ian Austin this has been a ramble for however many minutes it's been a ramble for and I'll be back on Friday with something I haven't decided yet I've changed my bit about blowout but anyway I'll be back on Friday and until then remember life is beautiful